I don't know what film Harry was in, but someone put a spell on him. You're dead, lad. Flip it. Eh? The curse of Harry Kane has now transcended North London. It's even transcended the British Isles. Over the last few years, even the past decade, Harry Kane has been one of the most impressive strikers on the planet. But yet, for all the goal scoring, all the playmaking, for all of the undoubted ability, he has no medals or trophies to speak of. Oh, nah, I never knew that. Now look, I'm sure this is not lost on you. The debate of Harry Kane and his trophyless career so far is, of course, the topic for big debate. But I wanted to go a step step further and work out whether Harry Kane is truly cursed. Neverkusen, you know. That's what they've been calling Bayer for the last two decades, since the big bottling of 2002 with the likes of Michael Ballack, where Leverkusen were the favourites for the Bundesliga title going into the final few weeks. They found themselves in a Champions League final against the great Real Madrid Galacticos, and were even in the final of the DFB Pokal, only to lose all three of them. Bayer Leverkusen were always the bridesmaids and never the bride. And that's why it's so ironic that since Harry Kane has arrived in Germany, Bayer Leverkusen are the ones to steal Bayern Munich's crown. And look, this must have been tough for the entire Bayern Munich squad. But for Harry Kane, watching Granite Xhaka leave North London and win the Bundesliga before him, heartbreak. Xhaka wasn't even in the he needs to win things conversation, bro. And he still double footed his way to glory. This guy moved home, moved to a different country, downloaded Duolingo, and still ended up with the same trophy tally as Ben Davies. He'll be trying to relive former glory, but will be caught by the local authorities using a dodgy fire stick to watch his Audi Cup win highlights. Ah, oh, don't worry. Don't worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got a dodgy pass. I this guy go off to Germany. <laughs> and speaking of former Tottenham players, you know, Bayern Munich's intentions were known. They were made known when they signed Eric Dyer. He didn't want to win the league from the start. Du gewinnst nie etwas, oder? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm Thomas Tuchel, listen, yo, when, if I get to the Champions League final with Bayern Munich, right, if I want to win that thing, Harry Kane's going to have to try and crawl out of the dungeon I'm locking him in. Now, before we get proper into proceedings, all right, and I'm going to say this again in FTW when I cover this topic, Topic again midweek, yeah. But shout out to Bayer Leverkusen. There will be a lot of rhetoric, probably unfortunately, I am contributing to that by making that video, I know. But at least in the video, I want to give them their flowers because Bayer Leverkusen have done something truly remarkable this season. When Xabi Alonso took over and took charge of the side last season, they were 17th in the league. This is a side that had become a little bit of a fallen giant. You know, a lot of fallen giants in Germany recently, the likes of Schalke, the likes of Kaiserslautern, Nuremberg. Big, big teams, Hamburg even, you know, European trophy winners that still attract crazy, crazy attendances, but aren't in the place that they should be. Bayer Leverkusen were maybe even on the brink of that. To come in, to be on a run of 42, 43 games unbeaten in a row, to take the Bundesliga crown, they didn't even just edge this, by the way. Pause. But they battered everybody. They slapped everybody. They're completely unbeaten in the league, for fuck's sake. They play great football. They perform the most ridiculous comebacks. Patrick Schick has scored more goals after the 93rd minute, unofficially according to Opta, than at any other point in a football match this season. There's a genuine chance they could do an unbeaten treble. And they don't look like losing in the league either. That, that would be one of the best achievements, I think, of any football club in the history of the game. There are some truly sensational footballers in that side. The likes of Jeremy Frimpong, who seems like such a nice guy, I and mean, he was absolutely fucked at full time talking to Granite Xhaka. Come on, my life, come on, my life. Tell them we won the league. Tell them we won the league, my G. Granite, you came from Arsenal and you won it here. My fucking G. And speaking of which, Granite Xhaka, a born natural leader, really. And I know he had his difficult moments at Arsenal. He's a very emotional, hot headed player. He would do stupid shit all the time, but I don't think there was ever any sort of question mark over his commitment to the side. There's Patrick Schick, as I mentioned. There's Alejandro Grimaldo. Radetzky in goal. Victor Boniface, by the way has been amazing. Nigerian hero. They all seem like such likeable characters, but the gem, the diamond in all of that has got to be Florian Wirtz. You know, winning the title with a 5-0 win after never winning the Bundesliga before. To do it with a 5-0 win and to do it with a young prospect that's going to go right to the very top of the game, scoring his first ever hat-trick for the club in, in professional football, having basically come through the ranks at the club. This is fairy tale stuff. This is things like they couldn't even write this in films, genuinely. Fuck, that's good. I would, if this happened in a film, I'd be like, you're, you're overdoing, you're doing too much. 17 goals and 18 assists this 
season for Florian Burt after a really nasty ACL injury when he was just 18. I hope he stays at Bayer Leverkusen, to be honest with you, for now, because I like watching that team, but I would love to see him in the Premier League. The pitch invasion at the end of the game, the scenes were absolutely wild. And no wonder they've not lost a fucking game all season if this is the size of the squad they've got. This starting 11 would be illegal. Yes, they're owned by a company that has a lot of money, but, you know, they don't spend it in the same way that Bayern Munich do. They don't have the resources that Bayern Munich do. And they've gone about their recruitment in such a smart manner. Pharmaceutical company, though. Really is a farmer's league after all. I mean, just look at the joy on everybody's faces. The security guard has forgotten what his job role is, mate. He's about to start knee sliding down into the penalty area. Even Thogden was down on the pitch. Not that Nathan Teller understood the situation, but we moved. And again, the gravity of the situation shouldn't be overlooked. This is a league that has been won by the same squad, by the same team for 11 years straight. 11. There are people in school in Germany that have never witnessed any other football club win a league other than them. There are Bayern fans that are 15 or 16 that have never experienced any sort of heartache. The last time Bayern lost the Bundesliga, Lamin Yamal was five. Harry Kane himself was on loan at Millwall from Tottenham. And yet with all of this going on, even in the pitch invasion, in the crowd, amongst the swarms of people, there's still that one dig at Harry Kane. A young Bayer Leverkusen fan in a sensational bit of shithousery saying thank you, paying his appreciation to Harry Kane for the curse that he's put on Bayern Munich. And I mean, this, this level of collective bottlery, all right, this, this consistency of a lack of, of winning anything, right? There has to be something at play here. Bayern Munich are supposed to win everything. Honestly, at this point, I think if Harry Kane went to Paris Saint-Germain, Stad Brest would look like an entirely different side on arrival. Manchester City have had a stranglehold on the Prem in recent years. If he'd gone there, imagine Pep Guardiola seeing him walk into the dressing room complex for the first time after signing. Oh, for People have talked about, you know, what if football was scripted, like WWE, right? Harry Kane's would surely be one of the most cruel, looking at his script before game week one every season. Personally, I'd be outside the writer's room banging the door down. Imagine being former Burnley winger Nathan Teller, seeing his script and seeing that he's going to win a Bundesliga crown before Harold does. Kingsley Coman must have thought that they forgot to end a trophy to the end of his final chapter in the book. These are perennial winners. Harry Kane has not won something there. But is it? his fault, you know, because if we're talking about Harry Kane being cursed, there has to be an expectation that he is involved in the losing of those trophies, right? So let's break it down. The Bayern Munich season, right? The one that's just gone. He's an unbelievable striker. Let's not beat around the bush here. Harry Kane individually is one of the best strikers in world football. His goals record over his entire career has proven that the actual all-rounded completeness of his game means that he can do a lot of different things. And that hasn't changed at Bayern Munich, right? And I'm sure you all know that. You know, if you look at the, the goal scoring charts for the Bundesliga, yes, sometimes goal contributions can be inflated in that league if you're very good, because again, Bayern usually dominate. The defensive quality of the Bundesliga isn't as high as other top five leagues, but 32 goals in 29 is very respectable. He's got five more games left. If he was to score nine in those five games, he'd match Robert Lewandowski's best season ever. Now that's a bit of an ask, and that's the greatest that Robert Lewandowski was able to achieve at Bayern, right? He's, he's within like, a, like an arm's length but also he's got to like make a step forward and maybe do a hop afterwards as well. It's tough, but not impossible, right? And even if he doesn't achieve that, it's his first season in the league. Bayern didn't even win the division and he would have already, you would imagine, come relatively close to, to what Robert Lewandowski was able to achieve in his prime at Bayern. He's got 39 in all competitions. He's been very important in the Champions League as well. But I think the problem for Harry Kane in this season specifically, and we'll get on to like a broader perspective of his entire career, but I think the main problem this season has been those shortcomings those days where he hasn't actually put a goal on the table have been the, the highlighted games, really. The games where Bayern did need him. That Bayer Leverkusen game, you know, for example, they lost 3-0. And it, he's not the reason they lost 3-0, but he was poor in that game. The Bochum game, I remember, where they lost 3-2. He missed, like, multiple chances in that game towards the end. I think he missed a one-on-one. -on -one. Those are games where he should have done better. But on the flip side, in the game against Heidenheim, for example, he scored. There were two goals to the good. He then can't help how poor Bayern are defensively for them to have our newly promoted Heidenheim to dunk three on them in the second half. So is he the reason that Bayern didn't win anything or haven't won anything so far this season? Don't forget, of course, there is still a Champions League on the line. They're in the quarterfinals. But is he the reason they didn't win the Bundesliga? 
No. Defensively and cohesively, they're not good enough. Is he the reason they didn't win the DFB Pokal? No. Is he the reason they didn't win the German Super Cup? No, he didn't even play. So that's, he's just been unfortunate, right? So then we go back to England. Now, we've obviously had chances, all right? This, this England squad right now feels like the best it's been in a long time. And so the Euros coming up in 2024 will be a great opportunity for us to win stuff. But again, I think England fans may go into it with some trepidation when looking at Harry Kane and comparing him to the, the chances that he's had with England. Obviously, Euro 2020, the final in 2021 against Italy, didn't necessarily step up. I mean, he wasn't someone that was attributed with the blame. You know, we had a relatively easy run to the final and he scored a lot of goals. But then in the moment that mattered, when it was the, the silverware on the line, you didn't really see that much of him, you know? And then obviously in the World Cup against France, again, gets a penalty. He misses it. He skies it. It's one of the worst penalties you'll see. But even when you look at those times, the Euros final, for example, we scored in the third minute and then we shot up shot for the entire rest of the game. He wasn't going to get an opportunity to make an impact because our whole game plan after Luke Shaw gave us the lead was to just sit back and do nothing. The game against France, yes, like you, you undoubtedly you have to just say that was a moment in which Harry Kane should have grabbed a game, a huge moment in his career by the scruff of the neck and said, I am him. I am that guy. And there are other times in his career as well. The Champions League final didn't affect the game in a way that he would have hoped. Even, you know, that, that Premier League title. They should have won the Premier League, bro, in what, 2017? Yeah, 2017. The year where Leicester went on a majestic run. And that, look, listen, the Leicester City story will always be one of the best stories in, in football history. Perhaps the greatest underdog story. We weren't involved, did it? Every, everyone else was shit. Like, Chelsea was shit, Liverpool was shit, and United was shit. We weren't there to stop anybody. Even Man City were pretty abysmal that year. But Arsenal and Tottenham should have been, they were there. They actually were performing well, and they were the, the, the candidates there to try and take that sort of fairy tale away. And Tottenham wasted it. Tottenham threw it away. They were probably a victim of a, a squad that was too young. Harry Kane wasn't even necessarily that experienced back then. Neither was Deli Alley. Neither was Eric Dyer. Even to an extent, people like Christian Eriksen hadn't been around on the, on the scene, the big stage for that long. Maybe like two, three years. I feel like he's always been in the wrong place at the wrong time. Most notably just in Tottenham, just as a place geographically. But being a League Cup runner-up in 2015, fine. You know, it's a, a, it's only a Carabao Cup regardless, and B, they were expected to win trophies, right? 2017, that's a moment that they should have grasped and they should have won the league. But it was a young side, it was an inexperienced side. 2019, Champions League final, they come up against one of the best teams in the world in that moment. There's even a stat, isn't there, that that, that dream starting 11 that, that Jurgen Klopp was able to build with Sadio Mane in his prime, with Salah and Firmino in their prime, Fabinho in his prime, Virgil van Dijk together with Joel Matic when he wasn't injured. They only lined up once. It was that one game, that one chance of Harry Kane up to that point winning a Champions League. Again, wrong place, wrong time. The Euros final. Honestly, tactically, I think we just got that wrong after scoring so early. And in 2023, it's it's not been his fault because Bayern have just been shocking. Thomas Tuchel is a terrorist, brother. Saddam Hussein, mate. He has a golden boot collection that none of us could ever imagine. If he used all of them that he's collected over his career, he could genuinely fund a five-a-side match. It's ridiculous. But a combination of him, honestly, and I, I don't mean this disrespectfully, just being a Tottenham player, the chances of winning silverware are just going to decrease because Tottenham aren't supposed to be a side that wins a lot of things. They should have won something, but they're not Manchester City. They're not Liverpool. They're not Chelsea. They're not even necessarily Manchester United in terms of trophy expectation. Unfortunately, can be combined with the fact that Harry Kane is not a big game player. He just isn't. He's played in 13 games that are either semi final finals or finals. He scored three goals out of 13. Big games are big games for a reason. They're hard. But a record of three and 13 is objectively shocking. Then again, you know, you, people compare him to like Didier Drogba. Didier Drogba was a freak anomaly that actually thrived and enjoyed big games. Not many players do that. Kylian Mbappe does that. I'd say now Mo Salah has that trait when it comes to playing against other big teams, like against like Manchester City or Manchester United in the league. I don't think Haaland has that. But is Harry Kane cursed? I think in conclusion, Illusion. No, I just think his decision making is cursed and I think he needs to do better in big matches. I'll be honest with you. Being at Tottenham for so long of his career, like the guy signed a, another contract. He could have left three years ago. He could have gone to a PSG or a Manchester City or a Bayern Munich earlier in his career and he would have won like three league titles by now probably. He is going to win stuff at Bayern. And maybe a Champions League this season would be the, the perfect end to this nightmare of a storyline that has been Harry Kane's trophyless career up to this point. What a footballer he is, man. I 
Valencia, you shouldn't judge players off the trophies they win anyway. Do it a little bit, because again, it proves whether they're a big game player or not. But fam, like 10 years ago, Maxwell, the left back, I don't know if anyone remembers him, played for PSG. If we used the, the metric of trophies, right, to decide how who the best player ever was, he would have been the best player in footballing history, bruv. He was a left back that was a backup for PSG. That though is going to wrap up today's video. What do you think about this situation, right? Is Harry Kane cursed? Is he going to win stuff at Bayern Munich? Will he win the Champions League this season? Or are Bayern going to falter like they have in the Bundesliga? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you have enjoyed this video, though, feel free to slap a like on it. And of course, subscribe if you are new to the channel. You can also follow me on social media. It is at OfficialFNG on Twitter and on Insta. It's been a pleasure ranting at you guys today. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves. And goodbye.